In the ongoing saga, Omi, the faithful Manji dog, persists in shadowing Catherine's every step, despite the acknowledgement of past missteps. Meanwhile, the memory of Harry and Meghan's ill-conceived alterations lingers, featuring an ersatz Archie and ethereal figures. Hello friends, welcome back to the King YouTube channel. It's bewildering, dear readers, how frequently the term mess has graced my keyboard in recent years. For nearly half a decade, ever since Harry and Meghan's departure to the United States, it feels as though I've typed it countless times. Perhaps optimistically, I entertained the notion that 2024 might signal the retirement of this descriptor, rendered obsolete with the passing of the late queen, Charles's ascension to the throne, and Harry and Meghan's retreat into obscurity. Yet, regrettably, it appears that such wishes will remain unfulfilled. The landscape remains cluttered with the drama of the Oscars, the tumult of the U.S. presidential race, and the persistent conflicts unfolding worldwide. It appears that amidst the relentless communal chaos engulfing social media news outlets and the internet overnight, the prior events have been overshadowed. Catherine, the Princess of Wales, has stepped forward, issuing a statement to assume full accountability for the perplexing situation surrounding the photograph. In her declaration, she candidly admits, akin to numerous amateur photographers, to occasionally engaging in experimentation with editing techniques. I'd like to extend my sincere apologies for any confusion caused by the family photograph we shared yesterday. I genuinely hope that all those celebrating had a joyous Mother's Day. However, it seems that not everyone finds this understandable. Enter Omi Scoby, also known as Scooby-Doo or even Scabies, who has plunged into a full-blown meltdown over the aforementioned photo. Let's not forget Catherine, a seasoned photographer, has openly acknowledged editing it. But let's be real here, who among us hasn't tweaked their digital photos at some point? Sometimes it's just about enhancing clarity or making them more presentable. When it comes to editing photos, our intentions are usually to improve the lighting, enhance clarity, or sharpen the image, among other adjustments. Editing is essentially about enhancing the quality of the image, not fundamentally altering its content like photoshopping does. The distinction between the two is quite clear. Moreover, there are cameras available today that can capture multiple shots and then merge them into a single image with varying degrees of success. To be honest, I own one of these cameras myself, and while it works well at times, there are instances where I still prefer to take photos manually because I believe they turn out better. This illustrates the freedom that digital photography affords us the ability to edit and refine our images to our liking. Turning our attention back to Meghan Markle, often referred to as cheerleader scabies, it seems there's considerable agitation surrounding the daunting challenge of attaining public credibility within the royal family. It's perplexing to think that despite the numerous instances of fabricated or heavily edited photos released by Meghan and Harry, this individual remains silent. Indeed, since their departure from the UK, it appears they haven't shared a single unaltered photo. Numerous lists catalog the extent to which these images have been manipulated, from Meghan's facial features to the infamous moon bump, and even the depiction of invisible children alongside the couple. Photos from both sides of the Atlantic have been subjected to manipulation in an attempt to portray the Sussexes in a favorable light, a task that seems nigh impossible. A prime example of Meghan Markle's photoshopping antics is that infamous photo where her thumb doesn't align with the rest of her hand and appears to be a different color altogether. Yet, did Scabby raise any objections about that one? Not a peep. However, he has the audacity to critique the photo of the Prince of Wales, insinuating that this single image has shattered public trust in the royal family. What is he even going on about? It's just another testament to the despicable nature of Harry and Meghan and the unsavory characters they associate with to propagate their misinformation and attacks against the royal family. Make no mistake, this is an assault on the entire royal institution. Naturally, they recruit individuals like Scabby to do their bidding. He's never been known for his intelligence and blindly carries out their dirty work without a second thought. People want absolutely nothing to do with individuals like Omid Scobie. It's abundantly clear. And decent folks, including many in Hollywood, also steer clear of the Sussexes. Just ask around, you'll find very few willing to associate with them. Let's not forget the notorious Nissan Harriman photo, the one in black and white featuring Harry and Meghan, supposedly taken while Meghan was pregnant and lying under a tree. Here's the kicker Harriman wasn't even in California at the time. He digitally manipulated the image using an iPad from his studio in London, adding in a fabricated English tree and potentially even a fake pregnancy stomach later on. But it doesn't end there. What about that phony invisible photo supposedly snapped at Frogmore? Turns out it wasn't Frogmore at all. 
Harry himself admitted in court that Lilybed, the supposed photographer, had never even been to England. So why does Omid Scobie remain silent on Harry and Meghan's blatant deceit? I hope someone delivers to him the same treatment he's inflicted upon the royal family. He deserves to suffer for the rest of his days. Meanwhile, Catherine, a talented artist and photographer, likely strategically illuminated the flaws in Harry and Meghan's photos. The most recent example being Meghan purportedly in Utah on a skiing trip. Catherine and William possess such astuteness that they manage to remain discreet in public but subtly counteract the foolishness in their own ways. According to a royal commentator, the chaos has resurfaced with Prince William and Catherine, the Prince and Princess of Wales, now at the center. King Charles bears the brunt of the consequences. It wouldn't be surprising if the Prince and Princess find themselves in King Charles's disfavor. Just about 12 hours after the Waleses released an official photo of Catherine for British Mother's Day, the first image of her since undergoing abdominal surgery and amidst weeks of frenzied speculation about her condition. Getty, the Associated Press, France Press, and Reuters all issued a kill notice due to concerns about the manipulation of the photo. It was indeed a bizarre and shocking development. Essentially, the Waleses were publicly called out by major news agencies an unprecedented occurrence. But more significantly, this poses a significant catastrophe for Charles and lands him in one's bad books. Because if there's one cardinal rule in the royal family, aside from never serving white wine with grouse or leaving Prince Andrew unattended with anyone under 18, it's that you must not overshadow the monarch. You must not outshine the king. You're absolutely right. It's a strict protocol not to overshadow whoever is currently wearing the crown, especially when they're about to deliver an important speech. Unfortunately, it seems that William and Catherine, whether knowingly or unknowingly, have flagrantly violated this unspoken rule. This puts Charles in quite a predicament, as he attempts to deliver significant remarks about the Commonwealth and friendship. The only individuals likely to pay any attention to him are probably Camilla herself, who may only be half listening, and the remaining six fully committed members of the Monarchist League. I'm certain the king was hoping for a peaceful return to work, but it seems he'll have to wait a bit longer. Currently, the king is still battling cancer. What the crown truly needs is to project a calm and steady demeanor, ensuring everything and everyone appears to be smoothly sailing along. Unfortunately, the handling of Catherine's ongoing sick leave by William and Catherine, the Prince and Princess of Wales, doesn't inspire much confidence in achieving this. Thanks to them, the royal family has been thrust into a surreal world where leading news agencies publicly accuse them of manipulating an official image. Social media, meanwhile, has long lost its grip on sanity. And so, whose fault is it? While some are pointing fingers at William, it's speculated that he might have ignited the frenzy when he backed out of attending King Constantine's memorial service last month at the 11th hour. Suddenly, the various outlandish theories circulating in certain corners went mainstream. Then, there was that paparazzi photo of Catherine and her mother, Carol Middleton, which only added fuel to the fire. And then came Mother's Day on Sunday in the UK. For the past few years, Kensington Palace has marked the occasion by releasing a new image of Catherine with the children, or as they did in 2022, sharing the homemade cards the young princes and princes made for their grandmother, Diana. This was a missed opportunity to quell the hysteria that has gripped social media. This was supposed to be an opportunity to demonstrate that Catherine, the Princess of Wales, is alive and well. It should have been a chance to set things right. But alas, that was not the case. Instead of a smooth return to normalcy, these news agencies issued that kill notice and chaos and chaos ensued. For Charles, it's a mess of monumental proportions, and unfortunately, nobody seems to have the slightest clue how to rectify the situation. Over the past few weeks, all William and Catherine along with their Kensington Palace office, have managed to do is create this uncontrollable chaos now being reported on by every major outlet worldwide. Even the New York Times has issued a news alert a rarity when it comes to coverage of the royal family. In all my years of observing and discussing the royals, their comings and goings, their ups and downs, their TV appearances, interviews, books, and whatnot, I've never witnessed anything quite like this. As we approach the first anniversary of King Charles's coronation, it's disheartening to see his reign overshadowed first by Harry and Meghan's truth-telling endeavors, and now by the Waleses and their propensity for stirring up trouble. So, what will this king do? In Harry's book, Spare He Recounts His Father's Plea during a heated moment in 2021, Please, boys, don't make my final years ones of misery. Unfortunately, it seems neither son heeded this plea. 
do I agree with this expert? Well, it's certainly a challenging situation for the monarchy, and it remains to be seen how King Charles will navigate these turbulent waters. What's your opinion on the matter? Feel free to share in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, don't hesitate to share it with others who might enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.